channel World Seed. For this webisode, we are celebrating two important occasions, World Health Day and the International Year of Fruits and Vegetables. Around the world, there is a huge diversity of gastronomic and culinary traditions. Yet one thing that all cultures have in common is that fruits and vegetables are dietary necessities. The World Health Organization recommends that we eat a minimum of 400 grams or five portions of fruits and vegetables daily. Not only do fruits and vegetables have high nutritional value, but for many growers and fruit producers, also significant economic and social value. Accessibility and availability of fruits and vegetables are crucial in achieving food security and fighting malnutrition. Today's plant breeders are developing colorful, tasty, and attractive vegetables that come in all shapes and sizes. We will hear how they continue to find creative ways to inspire people to eat more vegetables and increase the nutritional value of their diet. As a plant breeder, what do you think are ways in which plant breeding can make vegetables more nutritious and also more appealing to consumers? Let's start with you, Lisette. Well, I think an, a very important thing to make uh, the, the fruits and vegetables attractive is to think about what the market wants, what the market needs. Um, for example, like I said, I'm working for the Mexican market and I also have a very thin walled, uh, little bit spicy pepper there. And the fruit has to be uh, thin walled, the pepper has to be thin walled because they use it in specific dishes. And uh, to make it appealing for the customer, it should also match the expectation. Like they want a fruit that is thin walled. So that's what we should breed for uh, because that's what they will use. Uh, also something specific is that this pepper shouldn't be too spicy because that's not what they're used to. So to encourage people to, to eat more fruits and vegetables, I think it's very important to, to meet their expectations uh, or even excel their expectations to make it even more tastier and easier to prepare. Karina, could you tell us what you're focusing on? Yeah, I think uh, you mentioned the word appealing. And uh, uh, what you see in Asia is that, uh, especially during the rainy season, the vegetables, they don't really look appealing in the market. So uh, several of our crops are really focusing on uh, breeding for for the off season. So how can we make a better adaptation in those varieties uh, so that they thrive better in the rainy season? And and then uh, then we focus a lot on resistance breeding. So uh, bacterial wilt is a big problem, and uh, we have several viruses in in the rainy season. And uh, if we can build in a resistance for for those viruses. The, the fruits in the market they look much much more appealing so so that's uh yeah that's how we uh, approach it for a big part thanks karina lisette can you give us some examples of breeding programs you're working on which aim to improve the nutritional value and attractiveness of vegetables um so yeah if i look for for example at the serranos i'm working also on the serrano pepper um it's, uh, it's kind of comparable to the jalapeno, but a little bit thinner. Uh, a very important trait there is also the color. You want to have a nice shiny color. Uh, so that's really what, what we're working on because it has to, yeah, like Karina also said, it has to be appealing. Another point there as well is that, um, like Karina already said, it has to look attractive also on the market. So uh, when, when, when the fruits are being sold or the vegetables are being sold. So shelf life is also a very important point. Uh, to make sure that the fruits and vegetables look uh, good and eatable for as long as possible. Thanks, Lisette. Karina, you mentioned working on off-season production and uh, resistances. Can you give us some examples of breeding programs that you're working on right now? Yeah, so in, in tomato, we are really, fo what, what we saw is that in cool season, the, the fruits and vegetables are easy to produce and the prices for the farmers are also low. But then after the cool season, it stops. So um, we really, in already like 15 years ago, the Philippines started really to focus on uh, the off-season tomatoes. So the farmers would get a much higher price. They would earn more because vegetables are good for the whole chain. Eh? They're, they're good for the farmer. 
they're good for the seller and, and they're good for the buyer who, who eats them. So we want to make those uh, many vegetables. We want them to be a year round available. And uh, yeah, bacterial wilt is, is resistance was, is, is a high priority for us as a, as a tropical seed company. Thanks, Frederick. Now you've identified three points uh, that consumers prioritize or that retailers and food processors prioritize, which is reducing food waste and packaging, increasing convenience and improving sustainability. Um, so now my question is for the plant breeders. Are there solutions that plant breeders and product development can offer to this end? Um, and could you share with us some exciting prospects for the future? Um, well, yes. Uh, an important thing also is the, um, uh, like you already said, the, um, that you don't want to waste food, that you want to use as much as possible. And I think in that sense, it's very important for us as breeders to think about, okay, what can we do to, to help that, to, to reduce less food? So uh, if you think about how the final product will be processed, how can we help there? Um, if I think about the jalapeno, uh, you can see you can sell them you can buy them everywhere in jars and they're sliced uh, and what you want there is to have nice round slices uh, so for us as breeder it's it's important to to develop a jalapeno where you can get as many slices from as possible without wasting uh, a lot of the fruit uh, so i think that's a very important point for for breeders to focus on like okay what uh, what are we developing for uh, what will happen with the final product and how can we make that as efficient as possible? Uh, we also touched the subject already about uh, that it should be fresh long in the supermarket. So you can also think about, okay, how will it be stored in the supermarket or what is the process between going from the, from the field or the greenhouse or even vertical farming? Uh, finally, when it's in the, um, with the consumer, what are the steps in between? But does the fruit or the vegetable has to endure? And how can I make the fruit or vegetable resilient enough to endure all that before it's at the consumer? Uh, I think there is an important point that uh, where breeders can add something. Yeah, I, I also, uh, I heard the word shelf life and, and food waste is, is of course very important. And especially in Asia, you see that a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables are wasted before they reach the consumer. So we are always looking, how can we improve the, the transportability? Uh, should we make the fruits more firm? Or uh, uh, how can we improve the shelf life? And um, we have some good examples in that from papaya, but also from tomato. And uh, what, what we see is that uh, some tomatoes, and, and this comes also back into the, the taste, some tomatoes in Asia are still harvested very, very green, like in, in Myanmar and, and years ago uh, in the southern parts of the Philippines. Now, if we can make that tomato more firm, so uh, it's, it keeps well longer during transportation, it will make it possible for the farmer to harvest a few days later and that will really enrich the taste a lot so uh, those are also things uh, we are looking into so what do you think about the international year of fruits and vegetables uh, well i think it's very important to motivate people to eat more fruits and vegetables because of all the the health benefits that and uh, any way that we can encourage people to do that, I think it's good. And uh, uh, I'm also happy that I can help promote that uh, in this way. Yeah, I, I think it's really great. Vegetables are close to my heart. It's, it's my work, it's my, my lunch, my dinner. And uh, I, I think we have so many great vegetables which are already so nutritious, like the bitter gourd or the bitter melon, uh, pumpkin and kangkong and uh, I, I really like to see people start eating more vegetables so I think this is a great way of encouraging them.